What guitar do I buy? How do I pick a guitar? That's a big subject and let me shine some light on that. There's a couple of different ways to go to buy a guitar. You can go to a guitar store, you can go to a guitar exhibition where there's luthiers that make handmade guitars. Uh, you can order guitars. What would I pick? Of course, there's budget concerns. If you buy a guitar that is maybe a lower budget and that's anything under a thousand dollars, there's different considerations. But there's one thing that is very important and that's the first thing I check with every guitar. I take it and I play something. For, well, first of course, I tune it up. It's very important that the guitar is tuned perfectly. Uh, incidentally, when you tune a guitar in regular tuning, I use this chord to check the tuning. E, B, E, B, E, E. You could do this also. I find that a little more difficult to hold. Yeah. So now you tune the guitar, play something in your style on it. If the guitar speaks to you, if you love the sound, that's most likely the guitar that you want. Because if you don't love the sound, if the sound doesn't speak to you, you're not going to like practicing on it uh, and you're going to lose interest very soon. Once you find a guitar where you like the sound, there's a couple of technical aspects to check. First, you take your tuner, play your harmonics on the 12th fret, and play the note on the 12th fret. They should be exactly the same. If they're not exactly the same, there's usually some problem with the guitar. Now, with classical guitars, that uh, is sometimes remedied by them adjusting the bridge a little bit. If it's minor, somebody can adjust the bridge for you. It might be an indication that the action is too high because when you press a string down, it stretches a little bit and that increases the pitch of the string a tiny amount. A good luthier took that into account when he built the guitar. So the 12th fret is technically exactly in the middle between the nut and the bridge, but in reality it's not exactly uh, because you have to take into account uh, that the string stretches a tiny bit when you press it down. So try that. It should be exactly the same. Second, press the string down on the highest fret, whatever that is on that guitar, and on the lowest fret, and look at the distance of the string to the frets. There should be a tiny, tiny gap between the string and the frets, but tiny. If it's too big, or if there's no gap whatsoever, the neck should be adjusted, which can be done on steel string acoustic guitars, but cannot usually be done on classical or nylon string guitars. If there's a problem, the deal is over, don't buy that guitar. It, it, it can be fixed, but it is very expensive because somebody has to take the frets off, replane the, um, the whole fingerboard, put new frets in. No, it's not worth it. Unless you find the most amazing old guitar in the world and you have to have that guitar. Don't forget to strike like and subscribe to my channel so you can see all my upcoming videos. Next, and that is for me the most important. I play a lot of classical guitar and a lot of like individual finger style guitar. And I used to run into problems where certain notes on a guitar were much, much louder than others. The reason for that is the guitar is a box. A drum is a box. You hit a drum, it makes one pitch depending on how you tune the head. Um, the natural thing for a guitar or for any box is to make one pitch. Now, of course, we have many pitches on the guitar and to get each pitch to be equally loud on a guitar takes an amazing amount of skill from the guitar builder, an amazing amount. That's why there's guitars that cost tens of thousands of dollars because the, the maker is able, by manipulating the thickness of the soundboard, to favor certain frequencies that are usually maybe a little bit too quiet and suppress some frequencies that would be too loud on that guitar. So what I do is I take the guitar and 
with one finger usually I, I use the same finger to make sure that I, that I play it equally loud and I have the same tone play every note of that guitar Ideally, and this is unattainable, but ideally you would like every tone to have the same tone quality. That's not entirely possible because, uh, for example, here the A has resonances, the B flat has no resonances. But still, the closer you can get to that goal of each note being equally loud and equally beautiful, the better the guitar is. So. has achieved that. Let me tell you right away, usually, more often than not, on classical guitars, the problem is this A or this G sharp and the C sharp here. These are more often than not the problem notes. I have a guitar where this A clocks in at, at least twice the decibels played with the same exact power uh, than any other note. The remedy for that is for me to go ahead and EQ it, which used to be very, very tough because why would I, you know, I don't always want to just EQ out that A. If you have to use an EQ that's that strong and that uh, powerful, it kind of kills the whole sound of the guitar. So I was always looking, after I had that guitar, I was always looking for others that achieves this goal very well. Now having each note equally loud does not necessarily make this into a beautiful guitar. In other words it might sound equal but not beautiful. Ideal case scenario it's beautiful and equal but in my recording experience for me I have noticed that oftentimes I do prefer the guitar that is equal because if I have to use as little EQ as possible I'd still get a better sound than with a guitar that sounds beautiful, but I have to massively EQ it. After going through all this technical stuff, again, play the guitar in your style. If you don't love the guitar, the guitar will not love you back and you will lose interest in playing very soon. Let me add something about mainly about lower budget guitars. Um, there's of course a couple of brands uh, on the acoustic side is the famous ones are Martin and Taylor. Um, usually you will pay a little bit of a premium for a, a brand guitar. You might get a non-brand guitar of the same quality a tad cheaper. The advantage of the brand guitar is resellability. Usually a guitar, a Martin or a Taylor is easier to resell than a, a, a non-brand guitar. If you never plan to resell the guitar, you get a better deal with the non-brand. Uh, again, I don't want to necessarily recommend certain brands because I've found, uh, especially with hand-built guitars in the upper range, I found from the same builder I play one guitar, I love it. I play the next one, doesn't talk to me at all. These are my tips. Go out, test, love the guitar and the sound. And let me know if this helped you. Strike like uh, if you like this video. And feel free to ask me any more questions uh, about any subject you want to know. Bye-bye.